How you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tippet for Tuesday, March 27th. We're going to be talking about the upcoming Atlantic hurricane season here in a couple of months. These are the current sea surface temperature anomalies around the globe. You can see the La Nina here in the central Pacific starting to fade away a bit. We have warm water encroaching from the east here, and this is probably going to be moving towards a generally neutral, if not warm, biased, or El Nino signal as we head into the summer and the fall months here. Also notice that the tropical Atlantic, relative to the last couple of years, is a lot cooler than it was. Remember 2011-2010 at this time, we had near record warm sea surface temperatures just west of Africa here. That has changed this year, and uh, this is generally cooler, which we expect given that a couple of years of La Nina and the Pacific has taken a lot of heat out of the tropics and we expect these waters to cool relative to the years before them. Most of the warm water is bottled up near the U.S. coastline which we expected given the warm La Nina-ish winter which has warmed these coastal waters here. But in general the tropics are cooler, we have warmer water in the central Atlantic and this uh, set up with warm water to the north and cool water in the deep tropics is not favorable for upward motion and uh, favors less activity overall. We can see the Enzo forecast models generally bring us out of the La Nina into at least a warm bias neutral, if not a weak El Nino. It'll be interesting to see how warm we actually get here. This is the time of year when the models struggle the most at forecasting this, so it'll be interesting to see if we actually get a full-blown El Nino or whether we stay close to neutral. But either way, coming out of a multi-year La Nina into a warmer state in general of any kind is generally not favorable for enhanced Atlantic activity. And just based on this alone, then, I would expect much less activity than 2010 or 2011 uh, for this season. Now here's the sea surface temperature forecast from the CMC, CFS, Japanese, UK Met, and the European for the month of June this year. And uh, you can see generally neutral here in most of the tropical Atlantic. Most of the warm water bottled up to the north here in the Gulf Stream and off of southeast Canada, which is not good news for these folks up here if we happen to get a storm coming up this direction, something they may have to watch. Notice there's cool water down here in the southern equatorial Atlantic south of Africa and in the Gulf of Guinea. In general, this helps force uh, the intertropical convergence zone farther north into Africa, enhance the monsoonal circulation there, and the African wave train, which argues for the idea that this won't be totally dead out here. Even though it's cooler than normal, the Cape Verde season may not be an entire bust. We may have some healthy waves that come across, perhaps some that develop only when they get farther west into warmer water. So we may have some waves to deal with that are healthy, but in general this should be a much less active Cape Verde season out here in the eastern Atlantic than we had during the last couple of years. And of course you can see the El Nino developing here in the Central Pacific. This in general, if this enhances convection here, enhances wind shear across the tropical Atlantic as well. So regardless of the sea surface temperatures out here, the outflow from the convection in the Eastern Pacific tends to shear off a lot in the deep tropics of the Atlantic, which is one of the main reasons why El Ninos are unfavorable for heavy Atlantic hurricane seasons. Here's the National Multimodel Ensemble forecast for June July, August, September rather, showing the same kind of thing. Cool water showing up in the Gulf of Guinea. It'll be interesting to see if this actually verifies and hangs around here because we could have a wet Sahel and uh, those waves coming off like I mentioned. But you can see the strong El Nino showing up on this model here. But here's what's interesting. Despite the strong Nino on both of these sets of models here, notice the cool horseshoe shaped ring of water off of Western North America showing up on both of these model means, indicating the negative PDO hanging on in the Pacific. And what this can do is it can make things drier in the eastern Pacific and it's interesting to watch what happens if we look at now some analog years uh, that are similar to this year in terms of the Enzo setup if we look at warm AMOs meaning the Atlantic is in its warm multidecadal phase but we're coming out of multi-year La Niñas into Niños in the Pacific we get a few years to look at uh, this is the hurricane seasons of 1951, 1957, and 2002. This is the precipitation anomalies. Now, in general, when you have an El Nino down here, you can see the enhanced precipitation near the equator. We expect it to be pretty dry up here in general with El Ninos. This did not happen during these years, and you notice that in general it's fairly wet here in the southwest Atlantic Basin in the Caribbean and near the southeast U.S. coast. This is different, and I think part of it may be due to the fact that in these years we had a cool tongue of water off of western 
uh, North America during the multi-decadal cold PDO phase, similar to what we're seeing here, which helped to dry out this area, and despite the enhanced convection here, allowed enhanced precipitation in this area. Now, if we look at these hurricane seasons, they weren't the most impressive things in the world, but they weren't duds either. These, This was 1951, lots of activity off the southeast United States coast, and a few runners through the Caribbean. 1957 had a lot of activity in the Gulf of Mexico, and some out here. This was the weakest season with only nine storms, I believe. And uh, 2002 had, again, some Gulf activity here, and ten storms. Now, notice that in all of these years most of the activity tends to avoid the southeast US coast which is typical of El Nino seasons because most of the activity develops north of the deep tropics notice for instance here only one storm developed south of 20 north everything stayed up here and develops in the subtropics and this is typical again because of the wind shear and everything else in the tropics most of the storms develop farther north which is uh, good news in the sense that they have less time over water to strengthen before making landfall notice we only had one hurricane landfall here and zero hurricane landfalls on the U.S. in 1951 and in 2002 we only had Lily coming into Louisiana so not a lot of hurricane landfalls here which is good news however it seems like a generally wet pattern showing up in these for the Gulf of Mexico area and off the southeast coast not necessarily coming up it but that's largely dependent on the steering pattern the other interesting thing to notice over here if we look at these years is that it's wet in western Africa and this implies an, uh, an active rainy season over there. If we look at the Sahel rainfall anomalies in general for the last century or so, we, we've known about this multi-decadal a cycle that we have here it was a big drought in the 80s there in the 90s and the 70s and it was generally wet over here in the 1950s which is where most of the analog years are coming from 2002 is a little bit dry in here but we're coming back up now into a wetter Sahel in general and it's interesting if we look at what happens when the Sahel is wet but if we take all of the El Ninos during this period when it was wet and look at them uh, this is what it looks like of course wet over here and then this this moisture still shows up in the southwest Atlantic all of these years were El Ninos and none of these were actually that much of a dud season which is implied by this the weakest season in here was probably 1965 which uh, if, with the exception of Betsy which was a major hurricane landfall in Louisiana but most of these were actually fairly potent years with lots of activity in this part of the basin with generally normal levels of activity 9 to 12 storms or so and not a lot of hurricane landfalls but a lot of wetness in here lots of tropical storms hitting the coastline of the US and the Caribbean islands despite the fact that we have an El Nino firing in all of these years in the equatorial Pacific um, it's interesting to see this the connection between the Sahel, the Sahel rainfall and the healthiness of the western pacific warm pool in the atlantic here is interesting it could imply tropical waves coming off of africa and making it far enough west to enhance rainfall in this area of the world without doing a whole lot out here because of the wind shear and the other things that inhibit uh, this area of the atlantic during el nino seasons but the fact that the african circulation is very active may be sending pulses this way that enhance convergence and uh, allow rainfall to actually be above normal in the southwest Atlantic during these years and that is something very interesting to look at. The other thing uh, that has caught my eye is that this year if we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies compared to the anomalies that occurred in similar years when we were coming out of a multi-year La Nina into a warmer ENSO signal, namely 2009, 2000, 1957, 1951 here, we've been running above normal in this area of the Atlantic ever since the winter began in December, and this has been perpetual now, at least a half a degree Celsius in some regions, more than a whole degree Celsius above these years. These are not anomalies relative to normal, rather relative to similar years, indicating that in terms of heat content, we are running above Above what we normally do in the Western Atlantic when we are coming out of multi-year La Nina's and the reason I bring this up is because there is a relationship between the sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic during the hurricane season and the global mid tropospheric temperature if we if we compare if we subtract off the global mid tropospheric temperature in the tropics measured by RSS satellites from the hurricane season 
Atlantic tropical sea surface temperatures, we get this here. And you can see that there's a basic relationship with, in general, the activity in the Atlantic. This is the tropical cyclone count here. And if you compare the peaks and valleys, there's a general uh, basic relationship here that isn't perfect, but it shows the trend that generally happens. And this makes sense because if you have, uh, if you have it cooler aloft and you have warmer water beneath, it increases the instability, which enhances tropical activity in general. And we are subtracting off the global mid-tropospheric temperatures, but this makes sense uh, because of the enzo cycles taking heat out or adding adding it to the tropical atmosphere and then it gets circulated around the globe and then we can get this effect and in general this relationship um, looks like it has some merit and it probably would have been better if I would used the ACE down here instead of the tropical cyclone count but you can see that this relationship does hold a lot of the time and uh, the fact that if we look at the global temperature in the tropics now we're at minus 1.57 in February this is colder than 2009 not quite as cold as 2000 but it's also colder than 2000 2, which is one of our analog years and in general if we have it getting cooler because of the La Nina that's now fading away in the tropics in the mid troposphere and yet we're warmer in the western Atlantic than a lot of our analog years from similar climatic setups then it argues for perhaps more instability than we had in years like 2009 and 2006 which is another reason why I think we won't have years we won't have a season quite as inactive as 09 or 06, but still a lot less active than 2010 and 2011. That'll be the moral this year. I expect in general we'll probably have about 10 to 12 named storms, and we'll expect a lot less active Cape Verde season because of the El Nino increasing the shear over the tropics here, and the SSTs are a lot cooler than they were. I would expect, based on what we've looked at here, to see a generally decent amount of wetness in here, perhaps not as extreme as some of the seasons we looked at, but uh, I would look out in the Gulf of Mexico because of how hot it's been and how warm uh, the water has been getting in there. If that lasts into the summertime and if we keep the southeast fairly warm, uh, we may have uh, a lot of tropical storms trying to develop in homegrown uh, type situations that can move inland fairly fast, maybe not developing into hurricanes as often as they might in a full-blown season with more long traggers, which is good news, but we could be getting uh, some rain down in here and uh, certainly aiding even more. Texas has gotten a lot of rain already to help with the drought they had last year, but we may be seeing some more of that with a wetter pattern coming in there. Caribbean may not be so wet because of the El Nino. If it develops in here, if we actually get that El Nino, we'll probably keep it fairly dry in here and uh, then we'll probably have some activity developing out in the southwest Atlantic recurving pretty fast maybe something for Canada to watch because of how warm the water is getting there and the eastern seaboard as well because the Gulf Stream has been a lot warmer than normal and uh, thus if you get a random track coming up here it could uh, be something worth watching but that'll depend mostly on the steering pattern and I will be talking about that more in later videos as we go along here and start figuring figuring more out about this summer and uh, what we may be seeing in terms of the general circulation pattern as we get through this hurricane season but in terms of activity the moral is a lot less active than the last couple of years 10 to 12 storms probably closer to a normal season in general which is a little bit less than normal since 1995 but in terms of climatology near normal and uh, we shall see what happens. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.